there everyone, I'm Mr. Muckle Lover, and thank you for joining me here in the Red World Fan Fork mod for Hearts of Iron 4. Ah, in which we are playing as the Great Lakes Republic, which I heard has a unique focus tree, uh, and stuff like that, but it is 2010. We're led by someone named Melissa Hortman, so if you're wondering about her, please go ahead. I have no idea who that is. She's a moderate socialist, or we're moderate socialists. We've got American Isolation. We've got the Confederation Crisis, which looks terrible. We've got the Business of Democracy, which is okay. And we have the Creeping Authoritarianism, which sounds like a lot of fun, but a Republic on the brink. In 2001, or 2001, President Paul Wellstone, the newly inaugurated leader of the Great Lakes Confederation, began plans to abolish the weakened Confederation, which had been given all four seats in the Great Lakes equal status within the nation. After a period of political instability and multiple changes of government, the confederal system was blamed as a root cause for all this inefficiency and chaos. Numerous old American parties collapsed with their successors eventually consolidating into two major parties, the Democratic Alliance, a progressive group of legislatures who supported a transition to a unitary republic, and the Republican Party, a conservative party that sought to maintain the traditional confederation. Eventually, the plans to make the Great Lakes into a unitary republic were fully realized, but now, more than eight years later, in the second term of Melissa Hortman, opposition is beginning to rise again to the unitary republic. Supporters of a newly galvanized Libertarian Party, the Republican Party, and the Industrial Workers of the World, a union and political party, may have many have accused of being a front for pro-APC activity, have all expressed support for the restoration of the Confederation, even worse. A militant right-wing movement, small in numbers, and by vocal and its militant opposition to the Hortman government have risen. Many believe it not to be a threat, but if the cards are played incorrectly in the game of the Great Lakes Republic, our stable democracy could become rather unstable. Long live the Great Lakes! And as you can tell, we can't do a focus right now, and I forgot to make divisions. Which is okay, because... Because it's not. We'll see what happens. we got a lot of decisions here, but just all about history. So if you want to know about the history, please let me know, and I'll pop it up for you guys on the screen. So, Foster looked at as UAPR General Secretary. Cool. A political upset for Davis, and the beginning of radical changes in the UAPR. Which is the Union of American People's Republics. Led by, well, John. Because we have uh, Noam Chomsky over here, and we have Donald Rumsfeld, bless his heart, over here. The state of Illinois is... <sighs> Illinois. Jesus. It just... Oh, poor Yazo, but Illinois. N never. Not, not, not even once. But New, York, New Year recess ends. Following the traditional recess of the Great Lakes House of Representatives during the holiday New Year's season, the Congress people of all parties have returned to their seats, officially marking the start of the 2010 legislative session. President of the Great Lakes Republic, Melissa Hortman, opened with a speech about ensuring that economic justice and the stability of the Unitary Republic was upheld, which was met with mixed reception from a House completely polarized under democratic socialist policies. When she left, Republicans and Libertarians immediately attempted to try and introduce new bills to the floor of the House, most of them involving the privatization of vital industry or the reestablishment of the Confederation. As Hortman's Democratic Alliance holds a majority in the House with the support of most representatives from North Michigan and Minnesota, most of the common bills that mark the great start of the legislative session are often solely ceremonial, but as the saying goes, it never hurts to try. We have work to do, all of us, all of us. A new chairman, Mr. Handsome, okay then. Oh, who do we have as a general, anybody? John Jensen, sure John, you can lead us. Libertarians, oh, Voto Nakasone. I like Voto because we got more attack. Libertarians put forth the fourth Confederal referendum bill. Mr. Amish. He sounds familiar. I think I've heard of him before. We'll see. Following the five largely ceremonial resolutions, Bill, Bill H.R. 6 has been introduced to the House floor today by Libertarian Representative Justin Amash of North Michigan, a barely edited version of the past year's Confederal referendum bill, the bill, whose tenants, who at this point have been memorized by every single congressperson in the governing body, calls for a public referendum on the restoration of the Great Lakes Confederation. While the majority regime of the Democratic Alliance traditionally opposed efforts to recreate the Confederation at any cost, general electoral trends against the ruling party have left them vulnerable to opposition from the Libertarians and the IWW, who who have continued to advocate for the libertarian principles of four state confederation. Groans fill the room at the introduction of the bill, especially from Republican politicians who have maintained a policy of neutrality on the issue for years, and DA politicians who built the Unitary Republic in the first place. Although the DA still holds a majority to prevent the bill from passing, the libertarians have continued to make a show of introducing the bill every year to show how dedicated they are to the principles of the confederation and its decentralized government. See that it does in the committee? Do they have nothing better to do? I don't know which way we're going to go, because for this focus tree, we have two options. We will have the referendum concludes, the referendum to restore the Great Lakes Confederation and the political turmoil related to it has finally ended, and the populace of the Great Lakes has decided to change the future of uh, the nation for years to come. Oh my goodness, look at this. The coming weeks will decide the fate of the Hortman government and the nation as a whole. In the Factionman's Convention, we have victory for the Confederation versus victory for the Republic, so we'll see. 
but the Republicans refused to support the bill. Following the introduction of H.R. 6, the fourth Confederate referendum bill, many of the Democratic alliances expected the Republicans would support the bill as, just as a show of opposition against the ruling party. However, this could not be further from the truth. Representatives from Wisconsin, Paul Ryan, Curses Hart, and Scott Walker, which I don't know very much about, both supporting the party line of neutrality on the issue of the former Confederation. We believe we're instrumental in seeing Republican support for their endeavor and end. Establishment Republicans, in a show of force against the Libertarians, have voted against any hope of officially introducing the bill to Congress or the referendum to the people unanimously. And Justin Amish's fourth Confederate Restoration Bill was eventually shot down. With only the IWW, some Democratic Alliance defectors, and the Libertarians voting in favor of Amash's proposal, it seems that the tradition of a ceremonial referendum bill is once again gone as expected. Glad to see some opposition has some sense. Who actually likes Paul Ryan? Some people might. Maybe. Personal political opinions have a place on this channel, but meh. Meh. Scott Bowman resigns as Libertarian leader. He looks really disgruntled. No wonder he resigned, if that's him. Following the complete and utter failure of H.R. 6 in Congress, a longtime Great Lakes Libertarian leader Scott Bowman has resigned his position, calling for a leadership election within two months. Although he contributed to the rise of the Libertarian Party in the Great Lakes and its eventual merger with the Minnesota branch of the party, Bowman failed to galvanize moderates and liberals to support the party and would never gain the coveted 20% election threshold that was part of his leadership platform for years. With large-scale libertarian loss in their once strong heartland of the North uh, Michigan to the Republican Party and the Democratic Alliance, even though it was offset by gains in Minnesota, Bowman had already been pressured to resign by many in his party. <clears throat> Bowman's positions uh, of supplanting mainstream libertarianism as an alternative to the Republican and Democratic Alliance establishments culminated in a strong and stable party, but that stability might soon fade when the leadership election arrives. New members of the party have yet announced their candidacy, but many have their eyes on the Minnesota representative and former pres professional wrestler Jesse Ventura, along with Justin Amash, the, the original proposer of the Fourth Confederate Restoration Bill, as his possible successors. The patriarch has fallen. Well, now who do we choose? I want to... I like these toasters. I like these. Calling for an election? Princess Diana killed. Well, goodbye, Diana. Ooh, this guy. Oh, this is really... Holy, 15 and 20%. Jesus, that's really good. Nice. 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 Voto, more attack, probably more organization. Oh, whatever. You have 10 proposed Michigan Autonomy Act. With the failure of Amash's first confederation bill, it was likely that the Libertarians would try to force through another piece of legislation for consideration. Today is the Michigan Autonomy Act. But unlike restoring the confederation, Paul Upton's new bill is actually popular and could gain widespread bipartisan appeal. Setting local opposition to the Hortman government, the unique geographical position of Michigan, and political unrest or struggles with the People's Commonwealth, Upton asked the Congress to consider a bill granting significant autonomy to the regional administrators. With support from across the political spectrum, from the decentralization supporting leftists of the IWW, Republicans looking to undermine the government, and of course libertarians, the only thing the bill needs to pass is Hortman's own signature. Veto it? Let it pass. Ooh. I don't know. Moderate socialists that's na and nationalists, which is weird, because you can go, the sheriff's county or country versus Hortman's second term. I don't know. I don't know this woman. I literally I have no idea who this woman is. Like, that doesn't sound like fun. She doesn't sound like fun. We have the Fletcher presidency um, from the Twin Cities, Steve Fletcher, who I don't know anything about. The Hodges presidency, uh, mayor of Minnesota. Wait, mayor of Minnesota. Minnesota isn't a city, is it? Jesse Ventura, probably. I don't know much about him either. Um, and then we have the, the Betty DeVos, which... Eh. I've heard of Steve King. I kind of want to go with Steve King, but we'll see what happens. We have to be national style. Um, veto it. Let's veto it. Let's see what happens. Look to the left. Listen to the right. No more gangs in the government. Liberty and justice for all. God in the Great Lakes sounds like a lot of fun. Renew the nation, a vision of justice, defense of progressivism, American socialism, authoritarian constitutionalism sounds like a lot of fun, honestly. I kind of want to go that route. I want to go a lot of these routes. I don't go all the routes, but I don't have time for that. Unfortunately, as much as I would love to. Uh, I guess industrial concern. Gale Company? I guess. Protests in Iowa. Protests of the socialist government in Milwaukee and the failure of the government to put the issue to, of the Great Lakes Confederation up to the people have led to mass protests in Iowa, backed by the militia movement in Michigan. Our military forces have estimated that the militia movement, which promotes a heavily nationalistic, libertarian, and anti-socialist outlook, has significant support in Iowa as well as Michigan, mostly due to a general anti-socialist and pro-confederation outlook there. Republican Representative Steve King was the only major politician to speak in support of protests to claim that someone has to stand up against the overreach of a secular socialist government headed by these Minnesota elites. Although a police response is expected in Des Moines, the protests in support of a confederation might spread across the country, and the militia movement uh, influence on them could spell nationwide turmoil. The militia movement behind all of this? I guess. All I know is I want the rest of Michigan with us, the rest of, well, Minnesota as well. Why does Minnesota just look just a giant blob? Protests expand. Oh, look at this. Uh, to uh, 
Minnesota. Following the pro-Confederation militia back protests in Iowa, the general anti-government movement has spread to Minneapolis, where libertarians, Republicans, and the IWW have taken up struggle to advocate for a second referendum and more, more radical circles of the downfall of the Hartman government entirely. National security advisors are currently being counseled by the Democratic Alliance leadership as the protests escalate, and many have suggested the government listen to further proposals on the referendum. Although many of the protesters, if not all of them, seem to support democracy as a whole, the radical influences on the pro-Confederation movement, such as those from the Nationalist Militia movement, have instilled fear in the minds of many in our government. We must deal with this soon, unless the Hartman government faces even more opposition due to the people's fatigue with the socialist government. Although approval ratings still paint our government as a leader of the House of Representatives in the future, a minority in the next election could lead to a referendum being all but guaranteed. You're playing right into the fascist hands. You all look like sheep to a wolf. Ah, uh, politics. What are these templates like? 12? Mm, it's okay. You guys are the Confederation Pledge. In a highly publicized address of the people and his party, candidate for Libertarian Party leader and representative for Minnesota, Jesse Ventura, announced his Confederation Pledge. If there's not a confederation as this nation's government by the next election, you can bet. I will resign the first opportunity I can because I will not let three more years of the Hortman's authoritarian elitist government come between the people and their rights, Jesse said in a broadcast. You, the people of the Great Lakes, have an obligation for me to restore libertarian governance to this great nation. And I will do so. The truth is that neither the party, the duopoly, the Republicans, and the Democratic Alliance has any interest in listening to your viewpoints as a human, only as a subject. The speech was incredibly well received with Ventura's approval and the Libertarian Party is rising high above Justin Amash's. We declined to comment on if he was willing to make a similar pledge. Well, then he'll just have to resign. We'll see what happens. We get a lot of PB, though. Expert focus, we're on volunteer only. That's good for output. Hortman responds. In a largely pan counter address of Jesse Ventura's Confederation Pledge, Hortman found it necessary to attack him on many of Ventura's character issues instead of pointing out the issues with the Confederation, which he claimed later she had done enough of. In the speech, Hortman mentioned Ventura's previous lack of support for the actual people he claimed to represent, mentioning his lack of congressional attendance and large media presence, which he claimed ran contrary to his populist rhetoric that he was serving the people and truly knew all had an obligation to them. In the most controversial part of the address, Hortman claimed that much of Ventura and his supporters' rhetoric towards were classified as that of the same sexists that occupy the Republican Party, describing his persona as macho and harmful to civil political discourse for women all across the legislature. Although advocacy groups praised Hortman's comments, it did little to appease libertarian supporters of the Confederation who labeled her speech as an assault on men and especially Ventura's character. You can do better than that, and Ventura since leadership. In a landslide victory among registered libertarians in the Great Lakes, Jesse Ventura, a staunch advocate for Great Lakes Confederation and driven populist, has secured the leadership of the Great Lakes Libertarian Party in the place of Scott Bauman. His opponent, Representative Justin Amash, a finished as distant second and associated libertarian and anarcho capitalist thinkers who criticized Ventura for his alleged statism, ended far below both Amash and Ventura. A former wrestler who eventually joined the political scene during the crisis that led to the establishment of the Confederation, Ventura had been a staunch opponent of what he calls political parties concerned with only their agendas and their pork. The Republican Party and their Democratic Alliance. A staunch populist and anti elitist, Ventura had remained a popular politician among the Great Lakes, entire Great Lakes Republic, and some polls even placed him above the Republican Party in a possible election campaign. Whatever his personal positions may be, the Libertarian Party shall surely benefit from such a flamboyant character leading their party who has managed to attract public opinion, even from those outside the Libertarian spheres of politics. His staunch support for the Confederation and states' rights have left even many progressives to back him as an anti authoritarian choice against the ever elitist DA. Perhaps we should get that referendum bell ready again. There's a lot of reading. But well, we'll see what happens. May Day attack. Uh-oh. Ah, happy May Day. Oh, Philadelphia. King declares government might be replaced soon. In a political rally involving his Iowa constituents during the continued protests in Iowa, or in the area opposing the socialist government of Melissa Hortman, Representative Steve King was accused of making labeled both inflammatory and dangerous by even by many within the Republican Party. Speaking to an Iowa crowd in support of his re-election as a Republican candidate in the region, King declared that the Hortman government was incompetent and more concerned with fulfilling the government's pockets with the people's money instead of actually pursuing what really matters, Christian values, free market capitalism, and pride in the country. An attitude of white guilt has certainly shaped this nation, King said to a cheering crowd of supporters of the Confederation and of his candidacy last night. We have women like Melissa Hortman who continue to give all these concessions to these activist groups under the guise of advocacy and action, but what they're doing is simply funding revolutionary socialists and withholding money from the people who need it the most. You all here are suffering from a broken political system, which means to strengthen the profits of greedy socialists in Milwaukee. And if this attitude continues, I can tell you the militias, Christians, common farmer of the West, the Hortman government might be replaced soon with all this pent up anger. They can't seriously believe this guy. 10 out of 15, huh? Death of Slobodan Misovic. Alright, not bad. 
department holds press release. With the government of the Democratic Alliance coming under constant fire from the populist groups on both the left and right, and tension from radical militia groups and labor activists erupting towards the Hortman administration, the ruling party has found it necessary to give a press release surrounding new terms for the referendum. In a move universally praised by our opposition, President Melissa Hortman declared that a referendum on the restoration of the Great Lakes Confederation would be officially held in the coming months, and that each and every citizen would be able to cast a ballot for or against the Confederation. Their demands largely met. Protests began to dissipate across the country. Although militia groups pledged that they would continue to rally against the Hortman government, uh, socialist policies, with the actual restoration of the Confederation meaning little to them. Now those are the words that people need. Far right claims to... Huh. Death of Gorbachev. Tunisia declares independence. Who's Beam? King and DeVos spar over policy. On the issue of the Confederation, the Great Lakes' largest opposition party has been supremely divided. While Christian populists and those within... Uh, with those with more libertarian leanings have called for the abolishment of the Republic in favor of a confederation. Like ensure states' rights, party leader Betty DeVos has traditionally taken the middle ground, declaring that removing vestiges of socialism and Commonwealth influence from the Great Lakes is more important than its form of government. However, many in the party disagreed, but with the right rigid amount of party control that the party whips have held over the Republicans, many cannot directly vote for pro-confederation legislation. Many libertarians, such as Paul Ryan in the party, have stayed quiet, but Steve King's open support for the protests and favor of the confederation and sometimes directly involved with the militia movement has led Republicans to reopen the the Confederation debate, DeVos, in a harsh critique of King's, King's positions, declared that the Republicans should always stand as a moral alternative to socialism, not one that aligns with undemocratic militias and supports radical changes to the political system. Many in the party, it seems, do not agree with that assessment. Let them fight amongst each other. It's getting kind of wild here, isn't it? Kind of, well, well wild, but kind of weird. Oh, we can switch this around. Mark Ritchie. Oh, you cannot map. Oh, we can't replace him. Darn it. I like replacing people. We're going to go superior, superior firepower just because it's tried and true, but Hortman holds private meetings with advisors. Last night, President Hortman held a meeting with the prominent members of the Democratic Alliance, and the news had reported a claim that Hortman will resign if the referendum meet results in the pro-Confederation vote. Believing a yes vote to be a no vote uh, on Hortman's leadership, the President has decided to call a leadership election for the presidency, but also the head of the Democratic Alliance as a party, a position Hortman currently holds if the referendum does not go her way. Hopefully, the leadership election after a pro-Confederation vote would not sabotage the Republic, but there's no way of truly knowing until the leadership election happens, and even that, however, rests on an anti-Republic vote, which the government and polling suggest will not happen anytime soon. One more reason to win this referendum. When's a referendum? That's what I want to know. Is it in November? Oh, so, oh Libya's going to kill itself. Yay! We love Libya. Oh, my God, there's so many civil wars. King under fire for comments, like normal. Representative Steve King of the Republican Party has always been one for controversy with his ties to militias and associated other pro-capitalist anti-government movements, but now, the pressure has been mounting for the party establishment to finally do something about the unabashed Christian nationalists. Numerous controversial comments surrounding King have been brought up again by the media with his recent rise to public prominence. And many of them have been found disturbing. Comments surrounding Representative King's views on Montana during Portman's policy, such as the claim that they're not all Adolf Hitler out there. All things considered, I think that they truly want a society that is at least culturally homogeneous, for where all of their children can truly grow up to be Montanans and Americans. Oh, there's Beam. Oh, hello. Although King has expressed that statement was not an endorsement of the white nationalist policies, the representatives of other claims surrounding white identity, such as the claim that Muslim immigration in the Great Lakes has just been harrowing. Uh, and at this point, you have politicians who have no interest in even integrating into American culture running the Democratic Alliance. It's certainly cause for alarm, and I think all Christian white Americans should be watching for the future. Even within the party, many have called for to censor King and remove him from the party positions. But only time will tell what DeVos' response will be. What, will the Republicans act? We'll see. Republicans censor King in response to King's radical comments surrounding Islam, nationalism, and of course the current government. Party leader Betty DeVos, along with Wisconsin higher-ups such as Paul Ryan and Scott Walker, decided to censor King and remove him from all current committee assignments. Although most committees are controlled by the Democratic Alliance, the removal has come as a staunch blow to King and any Republican who would dare express nationalist views contrary to the party establishment. Numerous groups in the Great Lakes applaud the move, and even with prominent libertarians such as Ventura and Amash expressing their satisfaction at the move. Racism is not welcome here, nor is the toxic Christian nationalism that King exposes. Libertarian leader Ventura remarked, and most of the Great Lakes seem to agree with him. However, King has connections in the party, especially with representatives from Iowa and even in private militias. Perhaps the Republican Party has opened an even bigger can of worms. Good. No one likes establishment anything. Chicago's here too. Look at that. <clears throat> and of course, Texas is led by... That part of New Mexico. Rick Perry. No, no. Okay, and Mexico owns too much of America. And Arizona, King forms Christian People's Party. With support of multiple other rep Iowa representatives, Steve King has formed the Christian People's Party in opposition to the Republican views on immigration, the Confederation referendum, and other social values espoused by the Republican Party. In addition, King cited the opinion that the Republican Party. <clears throat> 
had, too, had far strayed from Christian and conservative values that were once embraced in the time before the Libertarian Party. King believed the Republican Party is moderated on social issues to appease the centrist party. <clears throat> Claimed the Republicans were gone too far, and that century was only the beginning of the party's decline. Although it's possible that Steve King's eventual efforts to create a Christian and nationalist party in the Great Lakes will result in victory in the referendum and rise of the party, the number of Republican legislators who actually joined onto his movement has been low. L less national conservatism, more nationalism. <clears throat> national conservatism. Does that actually conserve anything? Is he serious? I don't know. We'll see what happens. This is really weird. Midwestern Union. Who the heck is leading this? Probably some Mormons are leading the Republican Utah. Ooh, a little bit of lag. Let's see what happens. Bill Hammond's Mike Leavitt. United Arab Republic Dissolves. Union of Lincoln. Hey, I know. I've heard of this guy. I don't know him personally, but I've heard of him. Purdue's Reformist. Nice. I've got to play as Montana sometime. National Bolsheviks sound like fun. This guy's got a beard. Beam, huh? How's uh, Canada doing? Preston Manning. The Aiden Attack. The Referendum. Hormones government's finalized a referendum date, and now citizens of the Great Lakes Republic have been headed to the polls to vote on the restoration of the Great Lakes Confederation and the four-state equal government that characterized the free solution as Great Lakes government. From activism from the left, center, and right all being pooled together in support of the Confederation, but establishment of voices generally supporting the Republic, the polls are deeply divided and believe that the people of the Great Lakes Republic will produce a result almost equally for both sides of the referendum. Now all that's left to answer is the final question. Should the Great Lakes Republic abolish Unitary Republic and become Confederation? Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, oh, we removed the Confederation Crisis, huh? No. Confederation Crisis. Uh, honestly, this left path over here seems okay. Centralized Executive. Crackdowns in Iowa. I want my funny, uh, completely authoritarian socialist communist route, but I don't see one. Well, there's a defense of progressivism. Get a recruitable population factor, which is nice. But you also have the nationalist one over here as well. Hungry for war. Permit proselytism. Proselytism, yeah. Huh. Roll back social reforms with corporate backing by Laker campaign. Of course, then we do have stuff over here. Oh, what is this? The 2013 election. It's only 2010. Liberals in power. Uh, okay. We have Fletcher, Fletcher Philadelphia, the Vision of Justice, which is a moderate socialist, which looks even more fun than the one on the left side. Uh, we have the Hodges presidency, um, and this one is moderate socialist as well. Uh, expand union healthcare, enshrine Hodgism, work with the establishment, which is all right, I guess. Uh, wow, we use a lot of political power. We have the Ventura presidency, no more gangs in government. It's centrist, huh? Liberty just fraud and oppressive regimes. It's not too bad. People's tax rebate and ecological libertarianism. Hmm. Versus the DeVos presidency, crush conservative mutinies, strengthen a congressional hold, begin desocialization progress, deregulation for business. Uh, freedom of choice. Freedom of choose. Okay. The vice president's plan. Was Scott Walker, huh? Vice president Betty DeVos. Return of corporate re republicanism. A Republican military budget. Oh, no. The neocons. Bring back vouchers, though. Defense plan sector. Who's this? Jack Bergman. I think I've, re I've heard of him maybe once. War on corruption. Return of militant republicanism. <clears throat> Sideline king's ambitions. Promoting compromise. Vice President Bachman. I've heard of... She's a woman, right? Yeah. Versus Rally the Base. I'm... Hmm. Lessons from Dixieland. <sighs> no matter which way I go, people are not going to like it. So, let's see. Should the Great Lakes abolish the Republic... The Unitary... Sure, why not? Screw it. Why not? We'll go. We'll try to get Steve King. Why not? Maybe. We'll see. I don't know if there's anything we have to do. We'll see what happens, just because I literally don't know what, how this is going to turn out. You guys know from the thumbnail, but the yes vote is triumph in the referendum. And already the supporters of the president have begun to abandon her rule and that of the party. A staff for President Hortman to officially tender her resignation from the office of Commander-in-Chief and leave the post open for a new leader. All right, then. The Minneapolis Conference. The Republic has become deeply unpopular, and the legacy of unitary governance will surely tarnish her party in the future elections. Minneapolis, the heart of the working class activity in the Republic, is one of the only seats with enough Confederation supporters to hold a visible or viable leadership election. Two prominent politicians from the region shall run and hopefully save our party. President Hortman resigns, following the Republic's humiliating defeat, and the referendum to restore the Confederation to staunch the loyalists of the Republican unpopular president, Melissa Hortman. That's officially tendered her resignation. The politician shall go to her VP. No less a supporter of the Republic and Hortman's policies, Gwen Moore, 
The African-American establishment, progressive, shares her predecessor's unpopularity and is likely to resign as president and hold an official leadership election in the weeks to follow. Where the party's popular are only collapsing as charismatic demagogues like Jesse Ventura and Steve King's attract more and more with the anti-DA rhetoric. A leadership election hopefully will save our party, but many in the DA will miss the leader who helped cement the republic during a first term in Congress, or so we thought. Or office, not Congress. To the next DA leader. Well, we got Gwen. She got some really... I like the, por the portrait artist did a really nice job with her, actually. I like how she looks. With the glasses, I like the glasses and the lips. The red lips, I like it. And the hair, too. It's very nice. I'm sure if I, I Google this or put this in DuckDuckGo, like, you'll be able to find all these people, probably. Right? We still have a crisis. But whatever. There's so many routes down here. Oh, what's over here? Heal from the Collapse. Oh, Trial of Dane Bryan Stone. Who's this? And a highly publicized Michigan legal case. Uh, look at that. Uh, alleged terrorist and anti-government activist David Bryan Stone, leader of the radical who. Hutari militia, which calls for members, their members, Christian warriors, has been sent to court for numerous charges of conspiracy to commit terrorism and undermine the national government. Although, many civil libertarians have made the case that the trial is a free speech issue and that Stone has not made any direct measures to carry out his threats, the position of the Hutari Hut Hut as radically opposed to our government would strike fear into the hearts of many in the Great Lakes if he went free. Many in Hortman's administration fear Brian Stone will continue to act nefariously against the government and perhaps even follow through on his threats of terrorism, but some say the government has nothing to fear from this lunatic. Sure, prison sense. They aren't serious. No, no, of course not. Nah, they aren't serious. We'll be fine. Infantry expert, yes, yes, Queen or Gwen, same thing. Yeah. Did I read this focus? Yeah. Minneapolis conference. Queen Elizabeth humiliated. Constitutional convention announced. Well, in the victory of the Confederal set of the referendum, it has been apparent that all that the current Republican Constitution is no longer appropriate for a country. In response, with the backing of the entirety of the Congress, save for a few DA mavericks, Gwen Moore has called for a constitutional convention to pen a new Confederal Constitution already. A lot of the debates have risen about how the new Constitution is to look, whether it should be a revised version of the Republican Constitution, whether it should emulate the old Constitution of the U.S., or whether it should be a wholly new Constitution. The proposals are from across the spectrum. From the IWW to the far right, as a convention will be formed out of congressional appointees, however, it is not expected that the new Constitution will become too radical. When the convention convenes soon, the future of the Great Lakes will be penned. May Congress truly, really justify rule. A little ahead of time. Get some better guns. That's America. Somewhat of America. We gotta get the best guns. Light aircraft. I like the agility. Let's go with that one. Call snap elections. Congress is in chaos, and the popularity of the Democratic Alliance is quickly declining. It's necessary that we call snap elections quickly, unless the presidency of Gwen Moore collapses completely to our opposition. Libertarians, nationalists, republicans, and socialists all will vie for control of the Confederation. Let's hope that our government can emerge triumphant. Oh, I heard Yemen has like a unique focus tree, too. I'll double check them before we uh, keep going on. Yeah, oh my gosh. I have only known of one Yemen. But now Yemen has a lot of Yemenis. Free elections, huh? Well, not for you. Success of the play. Arab Yemen Republic, the successor. Mohammed Katan. Yep. And then there's you guys over here, too. Ali Salim al -Baid. Nice. The Republic of Iran. Constitution, Convention, Status of Governors. With the confederalization of the horizon, the restoration of the states is an inevitability as such. Discussion during the Constitutional Convention has fallen on just how powerful these restored state governors should be. Advocates of sufficiently strong Milwaukee government come from both Republican and DA ranks support giving the governors no more power than what they had back in the old U.S. To ensure that political divisions won't be able to tear the Confederation apart from the inside, opposed to them are the Libertarians, and more radical figures on the right such as Daddy Steve King, who advocated instead granting wide-ranging powers to governors to preserve and protect local democracy and to ensure that the promise of the Confederation is not hollowed out. As the Convention continues to draft the new Constitution, the first, this first vote may end up becoming a sign of how the Great Lakes of the future is going to look. I'm sorry, like, I'm sorry if you don't want me to go with like, Steve King. I, I want to go all these other routes, but he's the one I know the most, and I don't know. I don't like DeVos. Been sure I've never heard of. I didn't hear about these either, so that's like the one I know the most. Horman doesn't, she doesn't sound like fun. She just does not sound like fun. Melissa. Do you trust people named Melissa? Somewhat, but it's kind of like the, oh, it's an, I'm not going to say it's a boring route, but just, I don't know. I've heard of Steve King. He's kind of controversial, and I like the controversy. So, nationalist, huh? Nationalist. New significant powers. Cascadia Rebels. Oh my goodness. This is like a Make America Again mod. Make America Again mod. Who are you, Greg? A status of Congress. Oh, look at that. It's, oh. Look at all this stuff. These are just armies. Open up Cascadia. Dismantle state atheism. 
The Reconstruction Council. Well, another topic of debate. Well, the Constitutional Convention is out of the Congress. Turn on unicameral back during the formation of the Republic, this unicameral Congress is increasingly seeming unsuited for the Confederal state that we're becoming as such. There are many that are proposing that a bicameral legislature is restored to better represent the states in Milwaukee. Pushed by the Republicans and Libertarians, this position finds itself opposed by the supporters of unicameralism, a peculiar coalition of right-wing radicals and Democratic Alliance, who argue that a bicameral Congress would significantly hinder legislative work and, in the latter's case, risk defanchising the major states in favor of the smaller ones. The argument is certainly an important one, but the winds of change could blow in either direction yet. Continue but strengthen the unicameral legislature. Oh no, nationalism! I hate Illinois. I, I seriously hate Illinois. I got, I got a fee in the in the mail for using a toll road when they didn't say it was a toll road. I hate Illinois. Anyways, veto power. An important issue has been a sort of elephant in the room for the duration of the Constitutional Convention, but by the urging of the IWW delegates, the town has finally come to address the issue of presidential power. In light of the Hortman government's centralization of power under the presidency, however, it's clear that something must be done. With agreement from even the recalcitrant delegates from the Democratic Alliance, it has been argued that the presidency will be disempowered, but to some that is not enough. During the course of the IWW are the libertarians who want to transform the presidency into a figure opposition. With the Democratic Alliance staying out of the debate clearly humiliated, it falls to the rest of the delegates to define the limits of presidential power and just how extensive they should be disempowered. Veto, remove the veto power and prevent presidential overreach. Uh, the president is uh, checked in. Oh, council, crown council returns. Oh, that's cool. Intriguing events. Confederal referendum. The central question throughout this whole affair has been the power of the central government. And now the town is coming to answer that the central question. With the questions of the presidency and of the legislature are already being answered, the town is coming to finish addressing the balance of central power and the, end of the judiciary. With the big question being whether the central government should ultimately be more or less powerful than the states in regards to legislative courts, with some arguing that the nationwide Supreme Court should even be abolished. A lot of no-spoken faction, however, argues that no old confederation was a failure. The old confederation was a failure, and that confederalism is no matter how nice it may seem, does not hold the cure to the republic's ills, and that the best way forward lies in the middle with federalism. Much like the old U.S., it would mean that Milwaukee remains the most powerful authority in the country, although, as always, the choice falls to the convention. Significantly weaken the government, power to the states, we must learn from our mistakes. True federalism is a way forward. I like a federal government. Wasn't he already... Oh, second term is chief. Okay. He was already re elected. Convention ends. The Constitutional Convention has been a great success, despite some occasional snags along the way, of course. The convention was able to quickly move effectively to put a new Confederal Constitution together, leaving only a few people dissatisfied. With elections coming up, Confederals from left to right are already in arms, up in arms, celebrating this great Democratic victory. Congress has already approved the new Constitution, uh, effective immediately, and the parties are quickly re-gearing re for the upcoming electoral campaigns, while the Democratic Alliance has certainly taken a beating with a defeat in the referendum. The party is not yet out, and with its activists already gathering strength to campaign once more, to carve out their place in the Confederal ref future of the Great Lakes. As with a, a stage is set for a bright Democratic future for the Great Lakes Confederation. To the Confederation! The Great Lakes Republic will be known as the Confederation. What is this a picture of? I have no idea. Oh, look at that! We actually changed the flag! That's kind of cool. I kind of like that, actually. The president makes way for the new leader. As many of the Confederation expected, Hortman's VP, Gwen Moore, has officially resigned as president of the Republic. Although she was briefly sworn in as an interim leader, Moore maintained Hortman's cabinet and failed to make the preparations for a VP of her own, suggesting to many that, in that the DA was she was nothing more than a temporary leader to weather the storm of the Confederate referendum. With Moore gone, the position of president is now in the hands of the Minneapolis Conference, a meeting of leaders of the DA across the country housed Minnesota's most active city for progressive politics. Two leaders have come to the forefront, both Minneapolis politicians and veterans of the city's council, and their Democratic alliance, and more importantly, both supporters of the Confederation over the Republic. Their names are Betsy Hodges and C. Fletcher, both progressive firebrands, but commentators of sort of Fletcher and Hodges into larger two camps. Hodges, they believe, is a candidate for the Hortman wing, Hortmanite wing of the party, while Fletcher is a compromise candidate for the radical left in the IWW due to his personal convictions and experience as a community organizer. Whether Fletcher's coalition plan actually goes through the IWW, he does seem to be positioning himself as the most leftist leader of the party since Wellstone, while Hodges, well, although initially popular, has not been able to cement her pol policies in the same way. But will Hodges' call for unity still resonate with the party regardless? Steve Fletcher, because he sounds more radical, and I like the radicals. Oh, you actually became... Okay, too. Hello. Oh, the a sort of compromise. The Labour Party wins? At least he's smiling. At least he's happy. We have no bio of him, and he's got a very, really bad receding hairline, but that's okay. That's okay. We'll see what happens. If we have to have to go this way, I'm, I'm that's okay, too. You know from the thumbnail who's, who, who's winning the elections. I don't. At the time of this recording, at 33 ish, 34 minutes ish into the video. Very nice. So, when is uh, good old Noam Chomsky going to try to kill these guys off? Standing firm, political deadlock, 
Western Corruption, Appalling Recognition, and you all have Fight of the Executives, Flight of the Executives, International Stigma, and Standing Firm. Oh, you're all standing firm. You're all standing very, very firmly. Sounds like we could end up in a civil war here, which would be a lot of fun. Maybe. Can you not beat up these Republic of Cascadians? A bunch of weirdos? Snap elections. Election day is here. Look at Putin. The first election held since the return of the Great Lakes Confederation. This election has perhaps been one of the most competitive in the history of the Great Lakes democracy, with four viable parties all aiming for the highest office of the land. The Democratic Alliance may be down, but it definitely ain't out, aiming to deliver a progressive leftist future for the Great Lakes. The Republican Party, long relegated to being the opposition, finally has a chance to restore the Great Lakes to their vision of patriotism and free enterprise. The Christian People's Party, a right-wing populist party campaign on restoring God to government, claiming to be the only party with the guts to stand up to the socialist deep state in Milwaukee, and finally the Libertarian Party with its heterodox candidate, Jesse Ventura, which professes that it will restore freedom to the Great Lakes once and for all, with all the right vote split. The Democratic Alliance stands a decent chance of reclaiming power, but they should be wary of underestimating their foes. For now, two predictions agree on who the winner will be. Yeah, who can trust the polls? For now, let the voice of the people decide who's the leader of the Great Lakes in this new decade. King? Oh! Oh, my finger. Oh, it's a, why is Austria still united with Germany? That looks beautiful. I love it so much. Oh, it's so beautiful. Oh, my goodness. There will be no iron curtain. It's all of a Warsaw Pact. Except for you guys up here. Well, you basically went left, too, so. Oh, it's Scottish tension. So, look at his smile. His Okay, so this is weird. Like, But you can tell that his eyes are not... It doesn't seem like his eyes are smiling. He's... With this picture, you can definitely tell he's got, he's got a little cuckoo, but you know what's okay. We love him. We love him anyways. The King Presidency! Iowa Representative Steve King's Splinter Party's finally accomplished his goal of booting out corrupt moderate Republicans and socialist fellow travelers against all odds. Now, it's time for the Christian People's Party to secure themselves as the true leaders of the broken nation and restore God, faith, and reason to the King of the Great Lakes, to President King. Every man a king? No, just this guy. I'm not going to sideline him in and militia influence. No, no, no. Woo the Republicans. To hell with the Republicans. Who likes Republicans? An ironclad coalition? Rally the base. Steve King was elected in a hardline platform challenging the Republican elite, and he will deliver on that promise. To make good on our promises, King and Vice President Bachman shall appoint a cabinet filled with right-wing stalwarts, emphasizing forevermore that the CPP will never end a coalition with the corrupt and spineless Republicans. <sighs> Who likes Republicans, man? Some people do. Maybe I do. Maybe I don't. You know, in your opinion... What, out of all these people, who's the most radical? Is it is it is it King? Because I like I like the radicals. Like it doesn't matter what like what where the ideological spectrum you're on. Like if you're a radical, I want to play as you. Sheriff County. He's also a nationalist though. The sheriff has to put his foot down. She's just moderate socialist. Moderation is not fun. Radicalism, extremism can be dangerous, but a lot of fun. Fletcher presidency. That's why I went with Fletcher. Hodges. I don't know what she's. Moderate socialist. That's not fun. Moderate Republican, that's not fun. Nationalist Christian conservative, sounds a little radical. Well, at least to me, I don't know. Maybe not. Maybe they're just a bunch of wackos. But King forms the government. Nobody in the Great Lakes truly expected Steve King and his splintered Christian People's Repo Party to be anything more than a spoiler for the Republicans. But as polling numbers went higher and higher and DeVos' own power and strength collapsed under the weight of a mass populist movement, it became clear that King was more than just an angry Christian. With a message of a truth, Truthful, staunch conservative movement that could end the defeats of moderate Republicans across Great Lakes and fierce anti-socialism. King secured the reins of a minority government with no faction having any interest in joining his coalition of the faithful. Vice President Tim Wahlberg, a pastor from Illinois and Michigan, was one of the first to join the CPP, and is now tasked with a draconian undertaking of wrangling both the party and the opposition while King pursues a godly agenda as executive. Who under who did an uppercase the G in God? And although King has declared his beliefs of prosperity, gospel, fiscal conservatism, and hardline nationalist rhetoric, those of the people may have taken to the streets to protest his inauguration, declaring it a gateway for fascism. The gates to the kingdom of God are opened. He's still alive, isn't he? Can we get him to watch this video? That'd be so cool. But lessons from Dixieland. Um, it's all right. Allies are here. You more attack. You lose stability. I don't lose stability. So di lessons from Dixieland. Now that the Confederation has been established and King's rule cemented, we can work on establishing congressional power through any means necessary. One of these means is strengthening the power of states even within the Confederation's powers, providing national states governments an opportunity to bolster our rule at every turn. It worked for Dixie, so it'll work for us. I don't think anyone ever said that before, but whatever. Rally the base, because we're at 40% Alliance for Superior. Matt Salvino, who's that? Royalists. Workers of the Lakes, of course. Our Libertarian Party, Jesse Ventura. Martha Lanning, Schilling. 
uh, Fletcher, IWW is loved by Pita, not Peter, but Pita, Lindsay. Uh, Kishmar Sawant, cool. Do we have any bonuses or negative effects? No, he's been real. Support for democracy grows. Democracy? <laughs> democracy in our, in, our, in our place here? It requires all the following. Some of them are fascist, huh? Cool. Nalen joins cabinet in the building. Oh, where did you come from, Bill Clinton? Wow, go figure. Uh, in the building of his cabinet, there are two popular predictions as to how President Steve King would select his officials. The first believed that he would support more moderate officials in order to garner a wider support base, whereas the second believed that the most likely outcome is that King would appoint extreme individuals to cater to his niche but highly dedicated followers. The latter appears to have proven accurate as it was announced today that Paul Nalen has been appointed to President King's cabinet. Nalen has uh, held. Uh, long held infamy for his blatantly racist and white supremacist rhetoric, and his appointment to office has drawn immediate controversy, even among King's own officials. With VP Michelle Bachman in particular noting that she believes that the president is making a dangerous mistake in letting such obvious extremists into the government. However, many in the CPP, most dedicated voters, have celebrated this powerful statement against the political establishment and the ruling class of the country. What effect Nayland's presence will have on actual policy remains to be seen. Hopefully, they'll be ready to challenge Paul Ryan another time. How did you. Why? Why did Bill Clinton get here? He, a liberal, that's fine, but like. This is in Arkansas. <laughs> oh, and then they don't have a unique focus tree. Okay. But they don't... Why? I, I know you, you you wouldn't be able to win down here probably again, but, like, bro. Oh, come on. Pacific States? Kamala Harris is here. Comrade Tyner sounds more fun. Foster seems okay, but Comrade Davis is kind of nutso. I guess. I don't know. The SSRs. Well... Oh! Wait, what happened here? How did... What... Wait, so you, you lost so hard that you have VP Kamala Harris. I want to say something here, but let's not say something here. Commonwealth stabbing victim family arrived. The Hermosa family, parents and relatives of a victim of a brutal stabbing in a Commonwealth public school that created a media sensation have arrived in the coastal city of Kenosha, Wisconsin, off Lake Michigan. Refugees from Chicago, the family's son, was targeted and murdered by leftist activists in the school following an event that remains clouded in mystery. When the murderers were put on trial for the crimes, they received a lenient sentence from hardline socialist judge and a jury bent in defending against fascism in Chicago. Feeling unsafe. Uh, the family, the target of both praise and hate for the right wing political disposition, have now found themselves in the Great Lakes. Tragic. Allies in the militia movement to safeguard our power from the deep state socialists and their cronies. It's clear that we need more allies. President King knows exactly where to get those, as scores of loyal patriots have taken up arms and organized themselves into militias. By allying with these militias, we'll have ourselves a powerful ally. The Hermosa family appears with the president. At a conservative rally for the president in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. The Hermosa family has made their first appearance in the public since their arrival to the Great Lakes. A sharp contrast from the early reports which stated the family would be lying low. President Steve King, eager to condemn the Commonwealth's broken judicial system and blindness to true justice and equality, had recruited the Hermosa family to give short remarks about the death of their son and the danger to the social system in the Commonwealth. The family, speaking at the rally, condemned both the previous DA governments of Horton and Wellstone, while President Steve King, saying that their role as the nation's commander-in-chief during a time of turmoil on the American continent, prevented the Great Lakes from spiraling into radical socialism. Although many of the left have grumbled about the Hermosa family story being used to bolster the right. It seems that the momentum in favor of the president will not be any anytime soon. This is the price of socialism. Nice. They marry, huh? And I just noticed Sanders appointed a committee. McCarthy vindicated. Oh. Meet Commonwealth resistance. Sure. The struggle for nationalism and true conservatism in a shattered America transcends borders. King, a champion of the international right-wing movement, shall meet with the resistance across the American people's commonwealth clandestinely to determine the course of action against this rogue state of revolutionary socialism. Let's see what happens. As much as I want, I want to destroy Illinois. I got nothing against Missouri. Missouri, very nice state. They got a, their flag is not very great for Illinois, but. Missouri is an okay state. Illinois, though, oh my god, no, not even once. Not even once. That state just wants nothing but money from you. Well, goodbye, Texas. Polaris? Oh, look at this. Who's this? Michelle Bachman. A naive optimist. We have Paul Nalen. Huh. Ideological Crusader. Grover Norquist. William Moore. Kings approves at least plan. Johnny Jensen's still pretty, not too bad. Who the heck are you? President Steve King announced the official approval of the LEAF plan this morning, an act granting a bevy of concessions to various militia groups that have long operated in the region. Under this new legislation, the militias 
uh, will be given greater autonomy and freedom to recruit and train new members without government intervention. Mark Vanderborg, one of the most prominent leaders of the militia movement, has publicly thanked President King for his act, has openly stated that he has come to see the leadership of the Christian People's Party as the most important positive political development that the country's yet witnessed. There has been a long degree of ideological cohesion between the Christian People's Party and many of the militia organizations of the Great Lakes, although many militiamen had remained aware of any sort of electoral political movement. With the passing of the Leaf Act, this hesitancy may well be at an end, forming an alliance between the President Steve King and many of the nation's militias, a new mil militant base for the party. Meet the Commonwealth Resistance. Ban the IWW. I guess we have to go that way, huh? We can't go this way yet. Oh, we need to get rid of the Confederation on Crisis. Oh, so we we'll replace it with the King's Confederation. To get more political power, stability, fascism, nationalism, remove centralism and revolutionary socialism, and a lot less revolutionary socialism. Ban the IWW. It's clear that the hand of the totalitarianism is reaching deep into our country. Represented by none other than the IWW, agents of Noam Chomsky and Zilk in Philadelphia. To allow them to exist would be to allow them to further subvert our country. They must be shown for the un unpatriotic scum they are and expunged from our political system. I want more than just toasters, man. We need more world tension. God dang it. I want more world tension in this world. Tank designers, so be it. Strengthening states' rights. Just in case. Look at that one. That's fine. Do the best we can. It seems like we're gearing up for war. When these guys go to war, these guys, and these guys go to war, these guys. We'll see what happens. How do they get West Virginia? I know Northern Virginia makes sense, but King appears with Phoenix followers. Uh, let's see. To those in the West of the American Commonwealth, the followers of the White Phoenix and other militia and terrorist organizations often not even hide their support for the movement. Neither, it seems, does the president of the Great Lakes, Steve King, who has appeared with noted White Phoenix supporters or followers as they are called in an effort to curry favor the anti Chomsky groups and support an eventual national takeover in the region, although he denies any foreign interference. It's no surprise that the region uh, of the militia for the king has aligned himself with the patriot, patriot freedom fighters in the People's Commonwealth, but in many of the Great Lakes, open evidence that king has supported organizations considered fascist is yet more evidence he is working against the nation's interests and supporting fascism at home. King has denied the allegations that he simply actually sympathizes with the organization, saying that he simply wanted to get an outlet into the minds of those fighting socialist tyranny, and that most of the common Western populace in the APC who sympathize with said groups are patriots fighting for their ideals. They're simply nationalists fighting for their country. Why can't you see that? It's not a phase, Dad. It's just what we're doing. Commonwealth condemns King. The response to Steve King's meeting with the followers of the White Phoenix has not been muted. A mere day went by before the ambassador lodged a strongly worded complaint and urged the Great Lakes government to cut ties with this obvious terror movement. As days went by without any response from the President King, the tone from Philadelphia has begun significantly harsher. This culminated in a press conference where Noam Chomsky condemned the King administration as fascist sympathizers and state sponsors of terrorism. While President King was quick to brush off his criticism, it appears to have struck a chord elsewhere in the country, with multiple politicians joining the chorus of criticism, claiming that King had gone too far this time, bringing the criticism all the more closer to home. This cross will surely pass, as the Philadelphia government is too weak and ineffectual to make, such a, make much of this condemnation. They are tyrannical socialists. And you know what we gotta do? We gotta ban the RWW. So we basically don't lose political power. We get a little bit more stability, but the DA politicians uh, do something. They're furious. Yeah. You look familiar. You're the, you're the, he's the senator that got ousted in Minnesota, isn't he? The condemnation by the People's Commonwealth seems to have taken root in the Great Lakes, too. As proceedings in Congress it were interrupted by his DA Congressman Al Franken, that was him, launched into an impromptu rant against President Steve King, claiming to speak on behalf of the most of the party. Franken denounced the president as a terrorist sympathizer that would make Donald Rumsfeld pay on comparison before calling on Congress to impeach President King, although the Speaker attempted to restore order in the chamber. Franken's speech was received with cheers and support from other DA representatives, as well as some more left-wing libertarians, while Republicans and CCPPs, or CPPs, heirs, tried shutting him down after some tumultuous 15 minutes. Franken's interruption ended and order was finally restored to the chamber. President King was reportedly furious when he heard of what had happened, and rumors were already abounding that the President was considering taking action against the insolent Reds in Congress. Stick to comedy, Franken. Stick to comedy. Oh, Libya is killing itself. I forgot about Libya. Then again, who here remembers a, lo a lot of what's going on in Africa? I personally don't, but he meets advisors. Following Al Franken's furious denunciation of the government, Steve King called a meeting of his advisors and to discuss just how to handle this egregious insult. Sure, there was some clause that would allow him to censor Franken or something like that, but what met him, however, was a very difficult line. A lot of his advisors, including his VP, Michelle Bachman, argued that King had gone too far and that in order to preserve the good work that the CPP had done since taking power, King would have to resign. King was naturally taken aback by this, having anticipated that his own party would support him, but no. What followed was a heated discussion back and forth as King went first. It was perturbed as to why his vision was opposed, only supported by Paul Nalen, and then as he demanded loyalty from his own advisors, while Bachman argued that in order to save the Christian people's project, he had to step back immediately. As the meeting came to a tumultuous close, King pined for a moment and decided, resignation is necessary, we're going to double down! <sighs> Let's get radical here, and then a Christian nationalist agenda, of course. 
As her term continues, it's clear, it's clear that we need to not just govern the nation, but to inspire it with a patriotic and faithful message. President King and his faithful allies will draft a manifesto of the Christian People's Party so that everyone know, may know of our agenda. I'm suspending Congress proposed. Following King's, uh, President King's disastrous cabinet meeting, it appears that the President lent his ear to different voices. Although the government has tried hard to give out give the outward appearance of still being unified, criticism of the King, or of, of King, seems to be filtering in the CPP ranks as well, and is with that, President King has sought out new voices, leaking into major newspapers across the country. It appears that King has been meeting with multiple representatives of the far right, including known followers of the White Phoenix, to discuss his next avenue. Although the contents of these meetings remain unknown, it's clear that President King has been put to quite a conundrum. Open to merely show up support with support from the aid of these far right figures, he was surprised when Paul Nathan suggested that King orchestrated a military coup to secure total power within the Great Lakes. Radicals King may be, he did not appear prepared to oust the government, but since this contents President to his own ranks, it's clear that he needs to do something soon if he's to preserve power. A necessary evil. Uh, oh, English rights. We love English rights. Better th there than us. But I think we're going to conclude with reading about. I don't want this ability. Militarize the borders. Open borders are like a fortress with its gates unbarred and its watchtowers empty. An open invitation for enemies to support a country. With large communist power on our borders, we can hit two birds with a single stone by deploying a brave military to our border to ensure that no one, no enemy shall enter. Not bad, but if you enjoyed this weird episode, leave a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below, and I'll see you tomorrow when it sounds like we're going to go straight into war, and hopefully we'll burn Philadelphia to the ground, even though we're probably going to struggle quite a bit. Thanks for watching. Have a great, great, great King rest of your day.